Good afternoon, and welcome to this uh, session on control theory and optimization. So the first speaker is uh, Professor Luc Robiano from the University of Versailles. Uh, he obtained uh, his test data uh, in 1990. He has many publications and uh, he is a uh, uh, full professor at the University of Versailles Saint Canton. Uh, the subject of his talk is Carleman estimates results on control and stabilization for partial differential equation. Please welcome Professor Robin. Thank you very much. Thank you. I want to uh, thank the, the program committee for the invitation and uh, also the Korean local uh, organization, in particular the volunteer. And I uh, want to speak about um, Karlman estimate and uh, the application for on control and stabilization. But before giving uh, more precise uh, result on Karlman estimate, I want give two results on control and stabilization to motivate the talk. So the first result concerns uh, heat equation. Maybe we, we can look at only this uh, part. We look at the uh, heat equation. We have uh, a force term and we have uh, initial data and uh, we consider uh, Dirichlet boundary condition. And we have two, uh, two things, two data, uh, time, capital T, and uh, an open set, omega, in uh, the set big O omega. And we, the question is, uh, it is possible to find F, a fourth term, acting only on a uh, small omega such that uh, at capital T uh, u is exactly zero. So the game is we can only act on this set but we won't uh, drive uh, u to zero here also. So it is possible, it is a result given by uh, Fursikov and Immanuel and uh, also with uh, Gilles Lebeau. And uh, uh, both results use the uh, Carleman estimate, but uh, different Carleman estimate. Fursikov and Immanuel Ipila uh, use uh, Carleman estimate directly on a parabolic uh, equation. With uh, Gilles Lebeau, we use Carleman estimate on uh, elliptic problem. The second uh, result is a uh, result on the uh, wave equation. So we consider the, the picture is the same as uh, this one. Uh, we consider the wave equation with a dumping term. Uh, we have data and we have also uh, Dirichlet boundary condition. We introduce the energy and we have this formula. This formula says that as we assume that uh, A is non-negative, uh, this quantity is uh, non-positive, so uh, you, uh, the energy of you uh, de decreases and the question is how fast this energy decreases. And uh, if you uh, assume geometrical condition on a, a small omega, we can obtain this kind of uh, estimate, an exponential uh, decay. But uh, this is a result of uh, Le, uh, Bardos, Lebeau and Roche but without a con condition on uh, the set typically if the set is uh, very small as uh, this one 
uh, we can obtain only uh, uh, a decay as 1 over log of t to the power. So I explain later exactly what is uh, AK. So in uh, the two the theorem, we, uh, we obtain the, the result by Kalman estimate. But before explaining that, I must explain what is Kalman estimate. So we consider uh, a P, a uh, uh, partial differential operator of order M. Uh, and uh, Kalman estimate in, is a, an estimate of this uh, form. For simplicity, here I take uh, the L2 norm, but actually it's not L2 norm. But I, uh, for the, this introduction, I keep L2 norm. It is not very important. So keep in mind that it is uh, L2 norm, and we have this kind of estimate. So we have uh, tau is a large parameter. Uh, it's uh, bigger than a, a fixed uh, top uh, zero, and uh, in the proof we we let uh, tau goes to infinity. So it is very important that uh, the estimate uh, was uh, uniform with respect to tau. We have a weight. The weight play an important uh, role in the proof. And we are also V, but V is compactly supported. So it is, it is more or less, we can think this estimate as an energy estimate, but it is not exactly an energy estimate because it is, it is not uh, true in general that uh, a solution on partial differential equation is compactly supported. So we must do something to apply this kind of estimate. Okay. And to understand uh, this kind of estimate, uh, one thing is to see the proof of unique continuation. So I give the proof, the first the problem of uniqueness. All is in the picture. We have a, a point x0. We have a, a surface described by a psi of x equal a, a psi of x0. It is a nice uh, surface. And on the side of the surface, u is 0. P u is 0 everywhere. All is local uh, around uh, x0. And the question is, uh, does there exist a, a v, a, a neighborhood of x0? In general, v is smaller than uh, w, such that u is uh, also uh, 0 in this part. So it is a question. And uh, this question, to solve this question, you use Carleman estimate. So we cannot uh, use, uh, we, we must have uh, a Carleman estimate of uh, a precise uh, a type. So we have two functions, the function for the surfaces, phi, and a function for the, the weight function in uh, Carleman estimate. And we need uh, this form of uh, surfaces, that is, u is zero in this part, I recall, and you must have a convexity uh, for this, uh, this uh, level set of uh, phi. So it is not so easy to explain the uniqueness, so I prefer give uh, the proof in uh, local coordinates or where I take 
psi as a coordinate. So not exactly phi, but minus phi. So now I take phi equal minus s, so I assume that I have this Carleman estimate. And the picture is the following. The level set of uh, psi is uh, in black here. U is zero at the left hand side of uh, the parabola. And we want to prove that U is zero in a uh, neighborhood of x zero. x zero is uh, zero for uh, simplicity. So I cannot apply uh, directly uh, this Carleman estimate to, to U, but because U is uh, PU is zero here, but we cannot say anything on PU in this part. So before applying this Carleman estimate, we introduce a cutoff function. So the cutoff is one if S is less than uh, C2 and is zero if S is bigger than uh, C3. So one here, zero here. And we compute PV uh, and PV is uh, something the commutator apply on U but the commutator of P and uh, chi is supported in this uh, stream now because we have always a, 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 at least a, a derivative of chi. So the, this term is supported in this, uh, in this strip. So, We, we can uh, prove the result. We have the Carleman estimate, and we uh, estimate by below, by above each term. So I begin by the left hand side. So first, I restrict the integration on this set for S less than uh, C1. So as uh, chi is uh, one here, we can erase uh, chi, V, and equal U. And on this set, uh, the minimal uh, value of uh, exponential uh, minus tau S is given when S is uh, C1, because the weight decrease uh, when S increase. So we can estimate this uh, term by uh, exponential minus to C1. And we obtain this term at the left hand side. In the other uh, side, uh, PV is uh, supported here. So we have only an, an integration between, uh, for S between uh, C2 and C3, and uh, PV is uh, the commutator between uh, P and chi is a uh, differential operator of, of, of uh, order M minus one, so we have uh, an H minus one norm. And uh, on this part, uh, the weight can be uh, estimated by the value of the weight on uh, C when S equals C2. So we can estimate this term by exponential minus tau C2. And now we can uh, pass this term at the right hand side and we obtain this estimate. So now this term is a fixed term this term is also a fixed term, and this term goes to zero when tau goes to infinity. So this term goes to zero, so this term is exactly zero. So it is a proof. 
and we, we can see in the proof that the role of the weight, because we can, we can uh, introduce the cutoff function where the, the, the weight is small, small with respect to the, the, the side of the weight. So here the weight is small, here the weight is uh, large. So in some sense, the weight plays the role of a cutoff, but it is not exactly uh, that. So now we can, I assume in this uh, part that uh, u is zero here and p u is zero everywhere. But if I don't uh, assume that, we can repeat exactly the same proof. We keep the term and we find, I don't give the proof because it is a little bit uh, more complicated, but we can exactly the same term as before, the first line here, but we have also an other term with a large uh, exponential and we have here the data that is uh, u on the uh, left hand side of the parabola and pu uh, everywhere. It is ex essentially the same proof. So, of course, now we cannot uh, let the toad go to infinity, but we can optimize between the, the first term here and we obtain this kind of uh, estimate. Uh, easy. So this term u and uh, on the left hand side and pu uh, is uh, this term, and this term give gives this term. We we must uh, we must uh, uh, take a larger domain because this estimate is only true when tau is large, bigger than the tau. Zero. So when when you est you optimize this uh, estimate, sometimes you you must take two small. So it is not uh, relevant uh, when two is small. So we can we must in this case take u in a large domain. <coughs> so in general, of course. Delta and one minus delta is the same. Uh, we can change, but uh, in general, we prove this estimate for very small delta. So delta and one and minus delta is not the same uh, number. And uh, the, this kind of estimate is not true in general for delta equal to one except if uh, p is hyperbolic. Except for p hy hyperbolic, this estimate is not true without this term. But, so we can see, we can think also, also um, this estimate has the Adama sui, uh, sui circular theorem, but it is it is more weak, uh, it is weaker than uh, the three, uh, three uh, circle theorem because uh, we, we have no estimate on uh, delta. So, but it is more or less the same uh, idea. So the advantage of the, this kind of, uh, sorry, the, the advantage of this kind of estimate is we can propagate this estimate in the following sense. So assume I change uh, the estimate, but uh, I assume that for all x in a, a domain m, we can prove this estimate uh, for uh, if the ball of uh, center are x and radius uh, phi R, for instance, is in M. So we assume that we can prove this kind of estimate. Where it, 
uh, this estimate has the same structure of the one given before, but here we have the data, PU, and U in a small ball, and you have an a priori bond uh, on, uh, on U, and you obtain uh, a bond on uh, U, but in a smaller uh, bond. So we assume that we can prove that, and in this case we can propagate. So we, the goal is to obtain an estimate with this uh, on uh, U, with only U on a, the, the small ball around uh, X0. Uh, so we take a point in M here, for instance, and we take a path between x0 and this point and we construct ball of a ball of a radius r uh, on the, the path. It is easy to, to do that if r is uh, small because we, 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 want, we don't want to uh, touch the, the, the boundary. And uh, uh, we apply this estimate. At the first uh, step, we obtain a ball uh, of radius sweep uh, R, so contains this ball in uh, X1. And with this ball in X1, I can, uh, I can have an estimate as this one on the ball of uh, center x2 uh, here and I can repeat and at each step I can use the previous uh, estimate to obtain uh, an estimate of on this ball by the estimate on, on this ball with this ball okay. so at each uh, step I uh, lose uh, a, a delta so at, at the end of the, the induction, I have a delta power A, so small delta. So, and I can do that for all ball uh, in M, so it is easy to uh, obtain an estimate on M, not exactly on M, but uh, on M, except uh, a neighborhood of the boundary. So, if I exclude a neighborhood of the boundary, I can estimate M U on M epsilon by the data P U everywhere and U on the small ball E. And I have always an a priori ball on uh, U. So, first, I give a, a result. The result maybe is not very interesting, but it is typical of uh, the proof given uh, later. So, I take omega uh, Riemannian manifold, and I take the uh, again function and again value associated, and we have this kind of uh, estimate on uh, phi uh, g, phi uh, j. So we can estimate the, the L2 norm in uh, omega by the L2 norm of a small open in omega with this uh, exponential uh, c square root of uh, lambda uh, j. <coughs> if you if you normally rise a phi by one here, this means that uh, phi uh, uh, j uh, can be small but not too small. It is well known that uh, uh, phi j cannot be uh, zero on a small on a open set. It is a unique continuation result, but this is. Uh, quantitative version of uh, the, 
the result of, uh, of the fact that phi uh, j cannot be zero on a on a open set. And the proof is the following: we introduce a new variable s and a function u. By this formula, exponential s square root of uh, lambda uh, j, phi, uh, psi j, and it is easy to verify that uh, u satisfies an elliptic uh, equation. And for this equation, we can prove exactly uh, as, as before. It is not the same norm, but uh, it is not important. Uh, that we have uh, an estimate, so omega 2 and uh, omega uh, 1 is uh, uh, omega cross uh, an interval in S, 1, 1, 2 here. <coughs> and uh, omega 1 is the uh, same thing, it, uh, it, uh, uh, is uh, omega cross this uh, interval. So we have the same structure of uh, interpolation uh, estimate. We have an a priori bound on U on a large domain. We have the, the data, if you want, on the omega, small omega 1, and you obtain an estimate on omega 1 smaller than this one. Okay? Of course, this kind of uh, estimate is interesting only if this term is small. So without this uh, assumption, it is not interesting. So, uh, we can estimate all terms in this uh, estimate by, um, uh, by a, f a fine shape. So, as uh, S is is between uh, 1 and minus 1 and, and 1 here. We can estimate by below u by uh, exponential minus square root of uh, lambda j. And we can estimate in the other side u by uh, exponential 2 uh, square root of lambda j and uh, u on the small omega uh, by an exponential time uh, psi j uh, on small omega. So we can put that in this uh, estimate and you obtain the estimate. All the, this term is, is, uh, can be passed in the, left, uh, the right hand side and you have only uh, positive exponential and uh, this term can be absorbed by by uh, this term, because we have a delta is small but not uh, zero, so we can absorb at this term. and you obtain exactly this term. So, of course, here we have used uh, the fact that omega is not is a, is a, a manifold without a boundary, because. Uh, the only boundary of this uh, set, uh, we can say, of this set is uh, when uh, small s is equal to capital S or minus capital S. So we have, we have here the loss in domain, but only on S. So if we want to uh, obtain the same uh, result for uh, a Dirichlet boundary problem, we need the natural way is to obtain a, a Carloman estimate up to the boundary. So it is uh, the, my uh, next slide. And <coughs> when you study uh, this problem to find a Carloman estimate uh, up to the boundary, we see that we have two kinds of uh, Carleman estimate. Because sometimes you, you know the two uh, boundary conditions. We will see that uh, later. And sometimes we, we know uh, only 
uh, one boundary condition if we have Dirichlet or Neumann boundary condition. So the, the two Carleman estimates are not exactly the same. So I give a precise result now. So, sorry. So I take uh, an operator of second order and uh, I assume that P is uh, elliptic. A alpha are smooth functions, real valued, and uh, we, we have the notation for the derivative. And to obtain, uh, the, to obtain Carleman estimate, uh, we, have, we need this kind of uh, assumption called the uh, sub-ellipticity condition. But uh, in the context of a uh, second order uh, operator, uh, this condition is very easy to satisfy. Because if we take uh, a function phi with non-zero uh, gradient, we take uh, phi equal exponential lambda psi. And if we take lambda sufficient large, this condition is always very clear. So, uh, this condition is necessary, but we can always uh, satisfy with very, very uh, weak uh, condition on uh, Psi. And we can see that with this transfer, the <coughs> pardon, with this transform, uh, we don't change the level set of the of the function. So my uh, my picture before don't change with this change of uh, with this transform of function. So the first uh, Carleman uh, boundary is uh, following maybe uh, I. Maybe we, you see the, the picture. All the assumptions are in the, this picture. We have the boundary of omega. Omega is on this side. And we have uh, psi. Psi is uh, large in this, uh, in this uh, level set and small in, on this uh, level set. You have the, this picture. <coughs> we have the classical Carleman uh, estimate when you have uh, no uh, boundary if V is uh, uh, compactly supported. So, but if V is compactly supported, in sense, uh, can uh, V is zero in this part but not zero on the boundary. We have this uh, term on the, at the right hand side of the estimate. So it is exactly the same uh, estimate as before, except we have uh, this term uh, in the uh, right hand side. So, of course, we need to know the, this, the, the boundary, the two boundary uh, of V, because we have the, the V at the boundary, but also the normal derivative of V at the boundary to, uh, to apply this kind of uh, estimate. The second um, Estimate is uh, I forgot to uh, say something. With this, um, <coughs> with this uh, Carleman estimate, we can prove uh, an interpolation estimate, and the interpolation estimate is the following: is the part we, we have always. Uh, uh, a priori on uh, U, and we have also uh, 
instead of, uh, for instance, uh, this term here, we have the trace of u at the boundary instead uh, this term. And you have also pu, of course, uh, taking everywhere. So the term on uh, omega is replaced by uh, the trace of uh, u on the boundary. All is local. And we, at the left hand side, we have uh, an estimate of u where uh, the weight is uh, small. So here. So we have this kind of estimate. So we estimate the interior of uh, u at the interior by the boundary term. And the second uh, Karleman estimate is the following. So we have the picture. So we have always uh, the boundary omega is in this uh, side. And we have now uh, the function psi is in uh, other uh, sides, if, if you want. Uh, five is a large here and small and small here. And we have uh, we assume that V satisfy uh, for instance uh, Dirichlet boundary condition and we have uh, this Karleman estimate where the left hand side is uh, the same as the usual uh, Karleman estimate but here we estimate uh, also the normal derivative of V. And the kind of uh, interpolation estimate obtained with this uh, Karleman estimate is uh, we must, to apply the, Karle, uh, the Karleman estimate, we must introduce a cutoff function where uh, the support of the derivative is in this part in this part, in this part, and uh, in this part. So you obtain uh, a Karleman estimate where the, the data is in this part, essentially, and you obtain a Karleman estimate, uh, an estimate of you in, uh, in a neighborhood of uh, x0, but up to the boundary. So, uh, we can, with this estimate, we can uh, obtain uh, a global uh, interpolation estimate. The picture is the following. We have uh, omega, la, uh, capital omega. We have the small omega here, and we have uh, S, uh, an additional variable, S. X is uh, for S between 0 and 3S, and Y uh, for uh, S between uh, capital S and 2 capital S. And we have the same kind of uh, estimate, where the data is taken on a W here, we assume that u is zero on uh, the boundary here and on the boundary here. And you have this kind of estimate. We have a, a loss in uh, x. Uh, y is uh, smaller than x. So with this uh, estimate, we can uh, obtain uh, this theorem. No? So we take the, the eigenvalue of p and uh, again a function, and we take 
W the sum of uh, eigenfunction or the combination in R of eigenfunction for the uh, eigenvalue uh, less than mu square. And you are exactly as before, this the same estimate on uh, W. It is better than uh, the previous estimate, but because for the previous estimate, we have only one uh, one uh, function, uh, uh, phi uh, j. Here we have the sum. And actually, this uh, sum is optimal in general. It is not uh, true for the previous uh, estimate. With this estimate, we can prove, uh, we can prove uh, a, co a control result. Maybe I pass that. For the stabilization, we have exactly the same result. Uh, the, actually, the, the stabilization problem is uh, related with a uh, resolvent estimate. This is this resolvent estimate. And to prove this resolvent estimate, uh, it is the same thing that prove an estimate for this equation. And it is uh, approximately the same as before. We can transform the problem on the problem with uh, an uh, additional uh, variable s. And we can prove essentially the same thing. So I have no time, so I arrive at, at the end. Uh, this uh, Karman estimate are uh, used uh, this uh, uh, 20 uh, last year to solve uh, a lot of problems and maybe the, this uh, last year there is a very intensive uh, utilization of uh, Karman estimate in inverse problems. So, I'm sorry. I think that it is finished. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there is time for questions and remarks. Okay. If not, we thank again Professor Robiano. Okay, we have a um, uh, 15 minutes break.